In this video, we're going to talk about the work done by a force field. In physics, work is defined to be the product of force and displacement. In the most simple example, imagine that you have a box on the ground, and you pull the box to the right applying a constant force of 5 newtons. Suppose that the box is moved all the way over here, 3 meters away. Then the amount of work done is equal to the force, which is 5 newtons, times the displacement, the box was displaced 3 meters, and you end up with 15 newton meters or 15 joules. Now let's vary the situation a little bit. You still have a box on the ground, but this time instead of pulling the box horizontally, you pull the box at an angle theta above the horizontal, still with a constant force of 5 newtons. Again, we're going to assume that the box is moved 3 meters away. This time, however, the work done is not just force times displacement. We need to adjust the definition of work that we had before. Instead, work is equal to the amount of force in the direction of the displacement times the amount of displacement. So if we look at our force here and draw it as a triangle with an angle theta here, then the amount of force that goes in the direction of motion is the base of this triangle, which using trigonometry we can calculate as 5 times cosine theta. Therefore, the amount of work done is 5 times cosine theta newtons times 3 meters. Or rearranging this a little bit, I can write this as 3 times 5 cosine theta joules. Before we move on, I want to think about this problem in terms of vectors. For example, I might have a force vector, which I'll label F. I can think of my initial position as maybe the origin, and my final position as the point 3, 0. Then my displacement, which I can think of as the change in position, can be thought of as a vector, which I'll label delta R, is going to be the vector 3, 0. If we return to our calculation for the work, we can see here that work is equal to 3 times 5 times cosine of theta. The 3 here, well, that's just the magnitude of delta r. The 5 is the magnitude of our force. And then I have cosine theta, where theta is the angle in between. And this expression looks like a dot product. In fact, it's the dot product of the force with delta r. So if your force is constant and your motion is in a straight line, then you can calculate work as the force vector dot the displacement vector. So what we're going to do is apply what we've learned here to figure out how much work is being done by a force field on an object that is moving along a fixed path. I want to mention that you might encounter a problem like this where the force field is a gravity field or a magnetic field or an electric field. So this does occur in real life. So again, the question we want to answer is this. What is the work done by a force field F with components F1, F2 on an object moving along a curve C, where this curve is defined parametrically by R of t equals x of t, y of t, from t equals a to t equals b? Let's start by drawing a picture of what's going on. So let's say that we have a force field like this. So at any point on the xy plane, the force field F indicates a force vector applied at that point. Now let's say I have an object moving along curve C like this. Now I want to point out that the object doesn't necessarily have to move in the direction that the force field is pointing in. We are imagining that the object is moving along a fixed path, so sometimes the force field can point in the opposite direction of the object's motion in which case it's possible to have negative work done. So the way we're going to calculate the total amount of work done is by setting up a Riemann sum. Our first step is to divide up our curve into smaller pieces. Next, on each small piece, I'm going to approximate the work done by assuming two things. I'm going to assume that I'm moving in a straight line and that the force applied is constant throughout. So let's look at one specific portion, let's say between position Ri at the point xi, yi, and ri plus 1 at the point xi plus 1, yi plus 1. Between these two points, I'm going to assume that my object moves in a straight line. So my displacement vector, delta r, looks like this. 
Next, I'm going to assume that I have a constant force being applied. I'm going to use the force defined by the force field at the point x i y i. So the work done on this portion of the curve is approximately f at x i y i dot delta r. Writing out the vectors I have f1 at x i y i, f2 at x i y i dot well, delta r, the x component, is going to be xi plus 1 minus xi, and the y component is yi plus 1 minus yi. xi plus 1 minus xi is my change in x, so I'm going to call this delta x. yi plus 1 minus yi is my change in y, so I'm going to call it delta y. So this dot product would look like f1 at xi yi times delta x plus f2 at xi yi times delta y. Next, we're going to approximate the total amount of work done by adding up the approximate work done on each of these small pieces. So the total amount of work done is approximately the sum of f at xi yi dotted with delta r, or the sum of f1 at x i y i times delta x plus f2 at x i y i times delta y. And this second sum I can break apart into two sums. f1 x i y i delta x plus the sum f2 x i y i delta y. If we divide up the curve c into smaller and smaller pieces, the approximation is going to get more and more accurate. So our last step is to take the limit as the magnitude of delta r goes to zero to get the exact amount of work done. When we take the limit, the sums becomes integrals and we have the work done by the force field f equals the integral of f dot dr. And since we're integrating along a curve, we use the line integral notation and put a little c here. Now, we can also write this as the integral of f1 dx over the curve c plus integral of f2 dy over the curve c. So this is where I'm going to end this video. In the next video, we'll look at how we actually calculate these line integrals by using the parameterization of our curve c.